How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm going to be going through my early season whitetail packing list, gear dump, uh, essentially the key items that I'll be using plumb up until probably the first week of October as our temperatures and weather and the particular climate I live in don't change a whole lot in between the middle of September and the first week or two of October. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it. Starting with, I'd say, let's just work from my left, your right, over. Starting with footwear, the rubber boot option, as far as whitetails are concerned, um, this is probably going to be your best bet uh, in the situations of what I hunt in, which is small property, trying to keep your scent signature to a minimum. No, I don't freak out a ton about scent and scent control. I play the wind, but when it comes to leaving ground scent, that is something you can control and something that I do the best that I can to control by picking good entry exit out, uh, routes and whatnot. But these uh, muck boots, these are brush lands, but any muck boot like this is really my favorite. Uh, it's got a good lug sole, it has good traction, and I really like the fit. It stay, it's com they're comfortable. I could walk easily a mile one direction um, with these, you know, out and back, not have a problem with comfort. And the neoprene top that hugs your leg, really keeps crap from going down inside your boots. So those are probably going to be my go-to for 95% of my hunting in the early season, but uh, as I do hunts that uh, require a little bit more walking, I'll probably be leaning more on uh, my old go-to for several years now, and that's my uh, Nike field boots I had from the arm, left over from the Army. Um, super light, super breathable. Uh, they're like wearing tennis shoes, uh, but they, they give you plenty of support. Uh, moving on from there, uh, I guess keeping in the clothing category, I don't freak out a whole lot about clothes, uh, but I like to wear any more something like this sun shirt uh, or a lightweight uh, cotton or something like that long sleeve shirt that allows uh, me to breathe and not sweat too bad because it can still be 80s while you're hunting uh, during the early season here in Missouri. So I like to generally wear t-shirts, something like that, just some means of staying cool. Uh, like I said, these sun hoodies or hot any type of hot weather hunting clothing is gonna do you just fine for most of your hunting. Granted, we can have frost occasionally in uh, September, in late September. So if I'm gonna hunt a morning, which I almost never hunt mornings until we have an October cold snap, uh, at least I don't like to nowadays, but in the case that there's a cold snap, you know, something like this uh, 200 weight Peloton um, hood, fleece hoodie from Kuyu, something like that uh, would be a great option with maybe a vest but something that keeps you mobile, knowing that it's gonna warm up throughout the day. For pants, any type of, these are some, I don't know, Wrangler, all-terrain gear, something. Um, There's just a lightweight pant, any type of lightweight pant. These pants that I'm wearing right now are a fairly light ripstop type pant. Um, just something that's not super hot and baggy, thick material that has a little bit of breathability to it. You get the picture, it's hot don't wear a sweatsuit. Um, if I'm hunting on the ground, uh, my leafy suit is a must and it is mesh. So no problems there, breeds great. Uh, let's see, a uh, bag full of game bags for pack out, which doesn't happen a whole lot in the early season, but we do have a early doe season now that happens in the first about 
10 days of October uh, where I do usually pack in on public land and those I keep for that. Some type of water bottle. This is a stainless steel Nalgene. Doesn't have to be. Just, you know, you need to, it's usually going to be hot. I hunt mostly in the evenings. Like I said, it can get up in the 80s still. You want to have something to drink. Um, let's get into, uh, I guess, my possibles bag or my little waste waste pack that I've showed you guys a million times. Um, I've got some wind floaters, um, homemade wind floaters from uh, either uh, milkweed or cotton off of cottonwood trees. And then the main bag has uh, an Arctic necklace, which don't really need in early season, but an extra, basically it's an extra Bic lighter and lip balm. Lips can still get chapped. You gotta keep those lips supple. Uh, so then if you are a good kisser by chance, that you're able to keep your good kisser status. Um, a uh, ferrocerium rod. I always keep a couple means of starting fire, uh, no matter where I am, what I'm doing. Uh, fire starter and a couple different cordage options. Some lighter weight bank line, probably this is like number 20, something like that bank line. Uh, a hank of paracord and a um, cat Gen 7 tourniquet. Um, which goes along with the bleeder kit, uh, roll of curlics and an ace bandage that I also carry inside my pack uh, separately. But I do keep a tourniquet. And let's see what I got in the back of this. Uh, on the back of this, I got my T-handle saw. It's my go-to for getting through the pelvic girdle and some flagging tape. I use this waste pack as a pullout that goes inside my main bag, which I'll go ahead and get into. This is nothing special. This is an Alps Pursuit pack, um, repping the uh, United Bowhunters of Missouri proudly on the outside of it. Uh, this pack comes with this uh, stupid plastic piece of sheeting something in here that makes this rigid. I cut that crap out and you see I taped it back again. Um, I don't like that being all hard and rigid like it was. Uh, I like it pliable, um, and that's got a waist belt and two uh, pockets on the belt. It's been a great pack. I've been super pleased with it. In the event that I uh, pack out with this and have something with horns on it, uh, the rain cover, which is actually pretty decent quality, is orange. Uh, another useful thing for this orange um, rain cover is that if you leave your pack, let's say you leave your pack to go on a stalk or something like that, rip that thing out and it makes it easy to spot where you left your nice brown pack that blends in with literally everything uh, during that time of the year. But other than that, uh, for a $150 pack, whatever I spent for this, that's kind of like an internal frame pack, if you will. It's been great. Uh, I've hauled out uh, a couple animals with this it's been a good pack. Um, inside the pack, uh, a knee pad, which I'm going to use for the remainder of this video because my knees are killing me and uh, my knees are not good to me anymore. That's what uh, a lot of construction in your younger years will do to you. But uh, I'll keep that knee pad jammed inside this pack uh, if I do ground hunt. Sometimes I use this. I might just use it as something to, you know, cushion my butt on the tree stand, whatever. It's good to have a pad, a foam pad like this for someone like me that my knees bother me. Um, knives. Uh, I'm a big fan of Mora, uh, as you guys might know from my other videos. So I keep a Mora Companion uh, carbon blade. This is the longer uh, blade version uh, and a, a Mora 511 Basic. Uh, this is my favorite knife for whitetails, for skinning, field dressing, all the above. Great knife, both of these are great knives. They hold an edge, super sharp, Swedish steel, love them. Um, I'm getting to be a little bit more of a, uh, a priss on some stuff. Uh, you guys will probably laugh at me, but when it comes to handling gear and stuff like that, um, 
I tend to be a little bit more neat. I don't like to destroy things if I don't have to. I keep a set of dishwashing gloves for the purpose of field dressing. Uh, I don't always do this. A lot of times I just go for it full commando uh, and get in there and get the job done. But when it comes to handling a lot of your gear, handling uh, you know my phone and other stuff like that, uh, in and out of a vehicle, whatever, it's nice if you have the option just to keep all the as much of the blood off as possible. There's nothing wrong with it. Most field dressing kits have these things in them nowadays anyway. Um, but the dishwashing gloves are a lot heavier duty and they come up a little bit more. Um, an extra flashlight, handheld flashlight, uh, because flashlights go dead and uh, you need more of them. And if you've ever tried to blood trail a deer with your cell phone light, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, camo face paint, I hate a face mask. I hate a face mask with a passion. So if I'm gonna do anything about my face, which in my experience, it's not been necessary unless you're ground hunting. Um, but if I'm in a tree stand, probably not gonna use it. But if I'm on the ground, I'll use this face paint and hit some uh, high spots, cheekbones, nose, whatnot. A um, Little bit extra flagging tape and a roll of Gorilla Tape. Uh, this stuff has a million uses, uh, both of these do. So I keep that. I keep a notepad just for keeping general notes or whatever. Uh, if I take a, a compass bearing, which way an animal ran or something along those lines, um, I can keep those kind of notes, just whatever I think I need to keep notes on. It's good to have something. Two 50 gallon drum liners. I will line my pack with these uh, so then I can put my game bags inside of my pack. Um, I will use these to put meat on. If I'm quartering out an animal, I will lay these out on the ground and lay my quarters on these to keep them out of the dirt. Uh, there's a million uses for a couple 50 gallon drum liners and they don't weigh anything, don't take up any room, so I keep them on me. Uh, getting into the rest of this stuff, headlamp. Um, I can't remember the name of these. It's a knockoff company, uh, China company. Uh, Sofern, that's what it is. This is a Sofern headlamp. This is basically a, a knockoff of a Peaks Duo, and this sucker is wicked. Uh, I love this headlamp. It's rechargeable, uh, and I have found it to be an incredible headlamp. L uh, battery life, plenty long to suit me, uh, even on the highest setting. Super bright, and in, uh, most importantly, has a red light setting and it has uh, like three brightness settings for red light. Uh, yeah, there we go. Three brightness settings for uh, the red light, two or three. And then, uh, uh, I think three brightness settings for the white light. Great headlamp, love it. Uh, for binoculars, my Vortex uh, 10 by 50 Diamondbacks. I've had these for years now, love them. I love the extra light that I get from the 50 millimeter objective. Not gonna be switching from these anytime soon. Uh, I'm running these inside of a Kuyu Pro harness. Uh, really like this harness. I've tried several harnesses. This is my favorite so far. I keep a, uh, a powder style wind check uh, on my Bino harness. Uh, I, this is usually my go-to just for a quick wind check as I'm moving around or uh, as soon as I get up in the stand, if I think the wind is switched, something like that. And then uh, I'll, I'll switch between it and the floaters. And then I do not like the rangefinder pouches and all that crap, and I don't use a rangefinder for bow hunting. So I use this Kuyu uh, phone case. I love this phone case. This is one of my favorite purchases that I've made and uh, I keep my phone right in here, and this pocket out front is actually just big enough to hold my rangefinder. So instead of having a bunch of pouches all over the place, I can have my rangefinder and my cell phone in the same spot. Love it, great system, keeps water out. Um, a backup finger tab, uh, I've done it. I've left my tab in the truck, left it at the house, and uh, been forced to use my backup. Thankfully, I wasn't forced to shoot with bare fingers but because I keep a backup uh, tab. Um, my stool, this is uh, just a cheap 
freaking, I don't even know, Allen or Mossy Oak, I don't even know, some cheap like 10 or $12 folding stool, but it's the perfect stool for me, height wise, comfort, everything for ground hunting. Uh, it's got a shoulder strap, but I just strap it to the outside of my pack and it fits around my pack perfectly. And I just pack it in wherever I'm going for hunting on the ground. Um, my own side stalking quiver uh, of my own making, water buffalo hide. Uh, really like this style of quiver. This is my new favorite quiver uh, for um, carrying an, a quiver that's off your bow. Uh, I haven't found a better option yet uh, that's more versatile. Really like a side quiver like this. Uh, of course, wood arrows. And lastly, my uh, Ozark Hunter Power Hill style longbow, 51 pounds, 28 inches uh shooting lights out so guys that's pretty much it uh that is my gear list for early season whitetails hopefully this gives you some ideas of your own and um if you guys are going to be hunting early season and the hot weather uh you are going to get a leg up on everybody else and there's good hunting to be had if you can get them figured out so this is the most of it and i uh, hope it helps you guys out somehow thanks for watching this video appreciate your support please be sure to hit the like button. If you like the video, hit subscribe if you want to see more and leave a comment down below. Uh, that gets the video in the algorithm, lets YouTube know that you liked it and you want more people to see the video. So anyway, guys, thanks again. Get outside, shoot straight. I'll catch you next time.